So Coral are refusing to pay out £1,000 on a Premier League bet that they advertised in the Sun newspaper on the 15th of January. But it's not the first time that they've done this. It's totally wrong, but they'll more than likely get away with this as they lean on their own terms and conditions. Refusing payouts, banning winners and requesting bank statements to protect you from harmful gambling once you've won some money is becoming all too common with companies like Coral. Seemingly, they're allowed to pick and choose who they pay out after they've taken somebody's money and the sporting event has played out. But Coral and The Sun have both made a statement in this instance, so let's take a look, see what's happened here and how this is even possible. So it all started on the 15th of January this year when Phil Worthington, a 72-year-old retired electrician and grandfather, seen an advert on the top of The Sun newspaper where Coral were advertising a 40-1 to bet on the Premier League. The bet was for Manchester City, Liverpool and Chelsea to finish in the top three and Norwich, Burnley and Watford to be relegated. Now the price was 40 to 1. You can see the top of the Sun newspaper here. This is what Phil took down to his local bookmakers, Coral, where he said to the manager in the shop, I would like to place this better, please. Now the manager in the shop took the paper from Phil to verify that this was a legitimate bet that was on offer by Corals as advertised, where he called head office, took around about 20 minutes as Phil waited inside the bookies um, to confirm that this was available. The bet was available, the manager took the bet, and Phil asked the manager to to sign the bet slip and even right on the bottom of the bet slip in the bottom left hand corner that this was a special bet that was advertised in the Sun newspaper. Fast forward several months, Phil goes back to his corals to collect his winnings on this particular bet, being a thousand pounds for the 25 pound stake that he placed in the first place and Coral turned around and said to him that there's been a mistake. They offered him a price of two to one for that rather extravagant bet, which means that they would have estimated there was a 33% chance of that bet actually coming in. Now for context, Coral's revenue reported last year was 1.77 billion in the first six months where they made a profit of 130 million pounds. So the 50 pound payout that they were offering him was a little bit of an insult considering that the total payout was a thousand pounds even if they had made a mistake in this particular instance. However, they refused to pay. Phil has been back to the shop three times where they still say that this was a mistake and they're offering the 50 pound payout. It makes you wonder, doesn't it, if this bet hadn't come in and Coral realised that they've made a mistake, would they be willing to refund Phil and all the other people that took advantage of this promotion that they advertised in a national newspaper their money back? I don't think so. I've never actually seen a bookmaker ever offer somebody their money back because they made a mistake. It just seems to happen the other way around and the Gambling Commission allows it. However, the Manchester Evening News that reported this article initially did ask Coral and the Sun newspaper to make a statement about this incident where Coral said, the information printed in the Sun editorial section on this particular special bet was incomplete and therefore inaccurate due to the mistake made when trans transmitting that information to the Sun. The 40 to 1 special price we were offering at the time was for Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal to finish 1, 2, 3 and 4 in that order and for Burnley, Watford and Norwich to finish 18, 19, 20 in that order. The Sun copy didn't specify the fact that it was to finish in the correct order, but even more importantly, left off Arsenal for the top four correct finishing order, rendering it a significantly more likely outcome at the stage and therefore a significantly shorter price to occur. So they're saying that this is the Sun newspaper's fault, not theirs, and that's why they don't have to pay out. It goes on to say the actual 41 special bet we were offering was a loser in the end as Arsenal did not finish fourth. If a customer is unhappy with the way a bet has been settled in these circumstances they can seek independent advice from IBAS should they wish to. And of course they can and I would urge Phil to register a case with IBAS although to be honest having had a lot of experience with IBAS myself and many other people that follow this channel you're probably wasting your time. They do have a bias where they tend to settle in of the bookmakers. There's never anybody on the side 
of the average punter. Now, the Sun gave a statement too, where they said, Coral gave us the odds by email direct and without specifying the order. Furthermore, they took the bet as it stood, and so it is their legal issues and not ours. Now, no matter how much you hate the Sun newspaper, you can't really argue with that. It seems fair enough from them. So, is Coral in the wrong here, and how is this likely to play out in court if Phil takes that avenue? He's actually indicated in his article that he does want to take this to a small claims court. Well, given previous experience, I can tell you what I think is most likely to happen in this instance, because I've had many people contact me over time telling me about lots of different cases with many different betting companies, as you may have seen with previous videos on this channel where we've exposed some of their wrongdoing. Now, first of all, I think it's fair to say it's just common sense. Phil's not in the wrong here. They advertised it, they provided it, they took the bet, and therefore they should pay out. However, they're most likely to drag out this instance, and this is what they do regularly with withdrawal requests for many different reasons, using uh, problem gambling as an excuse, but they're just gonna try and grind him down in the hope that he'll give up and not pursue this. If he goes to a small claims court, he may well get his money back. Depending on how it turns out in court, it's likely that it will be dragged out and there will be expensive fees, which would actually make it not worth the time and effort for Phil to pursue. And these companies know this to be the case. I've heard many instances where they bring on board some huge corporate lawyers that cost an absolute fortune and say, hey, if we win, you're gonna to have to pay our lawyers fees too, which is very daunting and intimidating, especially when you consider that they're making 130 million pounds every six months. I don't think that's one that the little guy is likely to win on. Now, the Gambling Commission are just absolutely toothless. They've got no intention of reprimanding these companies for it hitting them with license restrictions or fines and enforcing their actual own rules to make sure that they pay out consumers and customers that are there to regulate the market for. In fact, they do quite the opposite. They spend a lot of time saying that there should be more affordability checks, sending through your personal bank statements and information so that these companies can then just exploit their position to extort it for more and more profit. Just like this instance here in the end screen where there was a case of one account, one person, one deposit, one bet, and then Coral put their withdrawal and winnings on hold to do more and more checks, and of course, avoid paying out. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.